Hi everybody, hi Paul, hi Robin. Uh, we are doing a quick podcast today with Paul and Robin from Fun Games who have done just wrapped up their first experiment with us on uh, Bitcoin Miner. Do you want to introduce yourselves, guys? Cool, yeah. Um, so, hey Tom, uh, hey everyone, I'm Paul West, the founder of Fun Games and uh, yeah, Fun Games is a mobile game studio. We make idle games. Our biggest game is Bitcoin Miner, and it's a cool little idle tycoon game where you earn Bitcoin as you play. And we've done our first experiment, which has, well, I won't reveal anything, uh, but it's quite interesting. Sure. I'm Robin. I'm the head of data for Fun Games. Um, we've done stints at various studios from Jagex to all sorts of little mobile places. And um, yeah, happy to share the results of what we've done this time around. Nice, nice. Well, it's good to have you guys on board. Um, so, Paul, you got in touch right at the beginning, like right when we first launched, um, and we started chatting about an experiment we could do in Bitcoin Miner. Um, but one of the things I thought was really interesting is like the origin story of Fun Games. Can you share a bit about that, about how, how you kind of ended up leading the studio? Yeah, for sure. So, um, well, Fun Games was incorporated in 2015 in the UK, and it kind of came from uh, me seeing the app store and thinking, "Oh, I can I can compete here. We could we can make games that could chart the top the charts." And I actually lent back to some colleagues that I worked with previously at a studio called Neon Play, who was also based in the UK. And my co-founder, in fact, is Oscar, who I met. At, at Neon Play, and it was quite a great experience at that studio. I think in the first week I was there, the studio won Apple's 10 billionth download from the App Store. Um, so, literally the first week going into this industry, front page of Silicon Valley, and it was it was wild. And we met some really great people at that company, um, Robin being one of them as well, who we also uh, work with. And yeah, so we've we've started that studio as a little side hustle. Uh, I had a, a job I worked for Ad Colony. I helped launch that in EMEA. And it grew to a few more people. Uh, as we started to make games, I started to resonate with an audience, always in idle and tycoon genre. Mm-hmm. And we had a top 10 hit in 2018. I think it was 2018 with Blacksmith, one of the first merge games on the App Store. And it allowed us to scale even more and more. And then I finally joined the company uh, about six years later myself uh in 2021 and here we are today we're 17 people uh, pretty much everyone's based in the uk over 10 million downloads of our idle games and yeah bitcoin miner came out of nowhere in around 2022 i think to really resonate and find an audience Mm. that loved it um it helps that bitcoin is also you know uh quite a popular subject Mm -hmm. and seasonal or market responsive i should say so that's kind of there the the history of the studio and we could kind of just focus on what we think we're good at which is making idle games cool and so just random question which came to mind as you were talking um why why idle games is it something a genre which particularly appeals to you or is it just because you've got the skills there now you really understand it yeah great question so uh, my co-founder oscar when we when you set up the studio, said we need something that is um, accessible to just two people or one person really, because I had a full time job, mm. being able to produce content that could last months of a player's time. Mm. And Idol is kind of hit that demographic for us. We also love that genre, so it helped us. But B, mm. it's because you know you can recycle you can recycle the content, so you can play a first playthrough. And you only get 10% of the way through and then you reset and you can get to 15% and et cetera. And you can really, without, without an art team or a, you know, a, a huge uh, amount of resources, build something that could last years theoretically. Mm. So that was, that was really why we chose the genre. Um, and, it, and it did work as uh, evidence of our first, first idle games that could keep players for, for longer periods of time. Hmm. Nice. I remember, Paul, that you had me do some contract work for you in the early days where you were saying, oh, goodness me, help us balance this idle game. 
And I said, correct. okay, I know, I know what an exponent is. I'll, I'll have a go. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that was, I believe that was zombie labs, which was the original Bitcoin miner. So instead of getting Bitcoin out of the ground, you'd got zombies out of the ground who would harvest brains. And it was, uh, <laughs> that was our, yeah, that actually, that game made us some money so we could hire our first full-time developer outside of Oscar. So yeah, Robin was the guy who did the uh, economy on that. And it's probably the same economy in the game today. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. That sounds a really fun game as well. I want to harvest some brains. <laughs> right. Anyway, let's talk about this experiment. So um, when we first started chatting, uh, we talked about a couple of things, actually. Um, we talked about one idea of having like a, the changing context in the game. So um, I don't know if you remember this, Um, like in um, Nightclub Tycoon, which is another game that we're working on, um, they have this thing where every so often, uh, you obviously you run a nightclub, that's what it's called, Nightclub Tycoon, um, and every so often a a celebrity arrives and um, when you kind of trigger that, then you've got this kind of like comedy kind of rip off like Kardashian or something like that into your nightclub and it accelerates everything so suddenly you've got loads more customers and they're all spending more money at the bar and so kind of it it becomes like a real focal point where you want to kind of improve everything for when the celebrity arrives and then once the celebrity is there then because you're earning so much money then you want to keep on playing and it like it's super effective so we talked about how we might be able to change like the context of bitcoin miner like is there could we have a certain event where I don't know, like suddenly everybody speeds up loads and they're digging more stuff out or there's more Bitcoin being mined from the mine. Um, But we decided not to do that. Uh, And instead we talked about goals, didn't we? Um, And and how, so in in our work at King, we we found consistently that putting in kind of short, medium and long-term goals can really um, provide a focus for players and really improve engagement because you're kind of you're making it clear like what next and you're giving the player a reason to kind of the next time they've got like an idle few moments and they don't know what to do with themselves they're like ah oh, I'm going to open that game because I remember that I had to complete this thing because I want to get to the next stage um so yeah that's that's where we ended up um can you do you want to can you give us some more detail about how you kind of how that was manifest in the game yeah, cool. So I can take this one. So um, we basically added the concept, well, we, we called it the feature mini missions. Mm-hmm. So every uh, every session start, um, the user will be presented with a mission. And these missions are technically infinite, but they get more challenging as you progress. And a very simple UI um, that we used. So we, one of the things we wanted to do is Bitcoin Miner can be quite a complex game to users. Mm. Um, you know, there's a lot of features in there, a lot of buttons on the screen um, when you're in the later game. So we, we really wanted to streamline this and make it very accessible. So we have a, a new HUD that appears at the top of the screen, which basically says, and there's, and there's a, a set number of missions you can achieve, like different categories. I think it's around eight or so. And it will cycle through them with different numbers to hit. So for example, one of them might be um, earn a thousand coins, which is, you can do that in many ways in the game. So it's kind of, it pulls all those features into that one mission. Others could be um, more directly monetized missions. So, you know, watch three ads today or, or something like that. Enable the boost three times, which is theoretically the same thing. So it really helped us kind of direct the user's attention of where we'd like it to go, uh, whether it's engagement or monetization, which kind of ended up being ultimately the same thing so that feature yeah we we tested it and 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 it's gone live and it has been really interesting to see uh the results which i'll let robin probably touch on because he's he's the one who controls it all and um yeah the 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 response from the community just anecdotally it's been really popular it's oh nice you know it's been a well received update it's kind of fun and it adds a bit more direction i think it's hard to prove this but it feels like it helps the the users who are learning the game to play as well. Mm. Um, one of the things that the designers did, which was really clever, was if you tap the mission, it shows you what to do, or it directs your attention to the thing that you need to do. So, for example, upgrade row seven four times. 
tap the mission, it scrolls you down to row seven with a little pointy tappy pointer. So yeah, there was a lot kind of behind it, but um, mm. it definitely feels like it's made the game better anecdotally, let alone looking at the data. All right. That's cool. All right, Robin, can you, can you tell us what happened? Sure. Okay. So um, when evaluating the success of an experiment, our main KPIs are lifetime value, obviously. That's the mm-hmm. one uh, Paul especially cares about when he's doing our EBITDA calculations. Um, and then um, the component parts of that, uh, which would be uh, retention, uh, conversion, uh, average revenue per paying user, and so on. So looking at the top level, um, we saw some changes quite immediately uh, in the early game as the first cohorts came into the experiment. Um, And that progressed through over a 14 day measurement period now um, to something like a 10 to 15 cent difference in our lifetime value by day 14. Uh, That being an improvement, I should say, not just any difference. Um, uh, So that's getting on for a what a 10 percent increase in ltv a little bit less nice. that's looking at both platforms together we saw a much more pronounced difference on ios than we did android mm-hmm. um i have uh hypotheses about this uh which would come down to user quality as we call it being a little bit higher on ios in many cases and for us that translates into a higher in our purchase conversion rate which um, exaggerates the difference between uh, the different groups LTV. Um, on Android especially, uh, Bitcoin Miner is currently quite dependent on ads mm. uh, for revenue uh, with not as high a share of in-app purchases as we'd like it to be, but it's it's been growing over the last year or so. So we see a much bigger difference there. Um, I'll just quickly give myself a reminder of how much it was by. So what did I say? On average, we're getting on for 10 to 15 cent. Uh, across both platforms, it's more like 40 cent on iOS. Wow. Um, which is really quite a nice a nice difference there, uh, mm. well into the double figures. That's cool. And then retention, if I remember, was kind of like not yeah. as impacted. Um, uh, Perhaps a slight disappointment, but these experiments never go exactly how you expect, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think everybody thought, oh, this makes the game more understandable. It will increase retention. Mm -hmm. Um, But what we've basically seen is no significant difference in our retention figures between the different variants, Um, at at least none that we can measure with our current sample sizes. So if there is a difference, it would be well below a single point, a single percentage point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was really surprised to see that, to be honest. My, I would have guessed, if anything, I would have guessed retention was up because it has that engagement effect of giving a player a reason to return. And if LTV was going to be up, it would probably more likely be related to ads because ads are the thing which is more related to retention. And so there you go, completely the opposite. <laughs> yep, that's, that's what I love about this type of test, though is now I think all three of us were already hypothesizing in our minds as to why. And I'm immediately thinking about, did we integrate many missions into our local notifications well enough? Are Mm. we doing callbacks, right? All this type of thing. Mm. We did not. (laughs) (laughs) That's what's great though, isn't it? Because it always triggers onto something else. Like uh, one of the things I was saying, the next... That for me, the next exciting part of this feature development would be um, uh, like replacing our tutorial or, or experimenting with the tutorial with the mini missions because they're so accessible. They're mm. such a simple design. We we basically right now activate them after the tutorial concludes, and the tutorial is like five six years old. So I think it's for a real uplift or facelift that it will give to the actual flow mm. of the tutorial, and then there I hope the retention will lift. Um, cause I too thought this was, a, this was a retention increaser, not an LTV increaser in terms of, I wouldn't have said it increased in app purchase conversion as Robin just kind of explained on iOS. So mm. yeah, it's a, it's a very positive result for sure. And also it's kind of just, you know, step one of where it could go. Mm. That's cool. That's cool. And the other thing we were talking about just before we started recording is, um, 
the idea potentially of like stacking missions. So I've definitely seen it in a few games where they'll have concurrent kind of missions happening at any one point, which seem to be quite nicely um, like balanced. So at any one point, you've always got a short term goal, you've always got a medium term goal, you've always got a long term goal. So even once you're you've got those kind of like more grindy type missions that might take you a few days or a week, you still got that one which you just, you're going to be ca- able to cash out like maybe in the session if you see what I mean, or, or maybe in this session or the beginning of the next one kind of thing. So you've kind of constantly got that like carrot ahead of you of like, just keep on playing, just keep going for it. It's nice. Yeah, that's that's a cool, that's a great, like, I can imagine that being a very uh, enticing visual for the users to like to see that and a reminder, almost like a, a to-do list of mm. things. And, and as I said, Bitcoin Miner is a complicated game, so it kind of helps to, to you know, to hold their hand a little with, and that feature is a great way to do it. Mm. Mm. cool okay well um it sounds like it sounds like you guys got a really nice strong result from this and you've got some great ideas about what to do next so yeah thank you very much thank you <laughs> definitely it was great yeah cool thank you cool. cheers guys see you later cheers Tom. Bye.